Hi, my name is Glenn, U.S. Life Master. In this video, we will look at a game between Kronuru Humphrey versus Fierro Bakura Martha at the FIDE Women Grand Prix. This tournament is a series of elite tournaments organized by FIDE and Global Chess with six legs over two years in various countries around the world. With three tournaments every year, the winner of each tournament gets 6,500 euros out of a prize fund of 40,000 euros. And the overall winner of the series will win a further 15,000 euros at the end of the series. The sixth event of the cycle was held from the 21st of February to 5th of March. It took place in Shakur Village and Spa in Doha, Qatar. Martha played a Voga Gambit, ditching a pawn for the initiative. There is a saying, the best way to refute a Gambit is to accept it. Did Humphrey accept the sacrifice offer? Let's see. The Volga Gambit. Black ditches a wing pawn in order to pressure White's queen side. Black intends to open up the A and B files. The original name of the opening was the Volga Gambit, named after the Volga River because of an article about 3 B5 by B. Argos North, written in Kushur, Russia, that was published in the second issue of 1946 of the magazine Shakmati in USSR. The term is still widely used in Russia, Russian literature. Beginning in the late 60s, the opening idea also promoted by Pal Binko, a Hungarian-American grandmaster who provided new suggestions and published his book, The Binko Gambit, in 1974. The name Binko Gambit stuck and is particularly used in English-speaking countries. The main line continues with the move CX B5 A6 BX A6 Bishop takes A6 followed by Black Fiend Shuttle the F8 Bishop Black players leery of the double fiend shuttle system where white plays g3 and b3 and fiend shuttles both bishops had preferred g6 on move 5, intending 6 for white, b3, bishop g7, bishop b2, and black plays knight takes a6. The point is that it is awkward for white to meet the threat of knight to b4, hitting d5 and a2 where knight to c3 may, may often be met by f knight x d5 because of the latent pin down the long diagonal. This is the main line for white nowadays. He intends to fiend shuttle his king's bishop over protecting d5. Also, this allows him to castle normally instead of castling by hand if he plays e4. Castle. Black also can play in this position. b knight to d7 instead of castling kingside. Black develops his queen's knight. This move is an attempt to pressure white's Queen side immediately. Let's look at some games with this. Rook to B1 getting off the diagonal. Bringing the knight to the queen side and pressuring D5. If queen to A5 is another idea, this is probably black's most accurate defense against white's king side fianchetto variation. Black hinders White's normal development, stopping him from achieving his desired setup. Black strips White's pawn from the center 
and now he pushes forward in that sector, gaining space. If rook takes f2, rook takes f2, king takes f2, bishop to d4, check. Winning. black wins back to our analysis game knight to b6 instead of queen to a5 stopping the knight from jumping into c4 threatening to redirect the bishop to f5 if Bishop to b7 is also a good move, threatening to win d5. And if white plays e4, the bishop will travel back to a6, stopping white from castling. Therefore, white continues. Knight to h4. Pressuring d5 again. C8 instead of Bishop to B7, which we just looked at. Knight to H4 once again. Threatening to kick the knight from H4 so the bishop can travel to F5. Notice how white king is in the center, giving the material back because white king is so loose. Jack winning if king to d2, queen to e2, once again check, and he's getting made it. Let's go back to our feature game now. But black elected to castle instead of the lines that we just looked at. Knight to b6. If queen to a5 is also a move in this position. Pressuring the queen side so white cannot play b3 in this position because the knight on c3 hangs. Therefore,
checkmate. Let's return to our feature game. Like the B6 was played in the in our feature game. This is what blacks want to avoid when playing the Volga Dinko Gambit. White has consolidated his forces and it will be difficult for black to find counterplay. Remember, he is a pawn down. Destroying Black's pawn structure. Trying to find counterplay. But all he did was weaken his light squares. And the B pawn is too strong. Black is lost in this position. The game is over. Black resigns. White Rook will slam on the C8 square, causing permanent destruction in black position. Black must achieve counterplay quickly in the Binko Volga Gambit. He achieved best results when he pressured white's d5 square early. Not, not allowing the first player to secure his position with natural developing moves. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Good chess. Cheers.